Hi. Uh, in this video, we will be showing how to install packages and then load those packages into R. So if you're not sure what I mean by a package, that's fair. It's kind of ambiguous at times. There's a lot of different forms they can take. But the, the main idea is that a package is a compilation of code that is been kind of packaged together into a way that allows it to be more easily shared. So in this case, we're going to be demonstrating with a package that I use daily, um, and that has probably been a major reason why R has become very popular, uh, especially among biologists in recent years. And so that package is called ggplot2. Um, and it's a, a data visualization package. It's extremely flexible. It kind of establishes all sorts of fun stuff, but, but you have to do more on that later. Um, but right now, it's just about installing this, this important package. So uh, to start off with, the, the main function that I use to install packages is called install.packages parentheses. So that is the name of the function. Uh, there are some alternatives out there. Specifically, there are whole packages devoted to improving methods of installing packages. Um, and there's a few caveats that I'm going to have to explain. But for now, let me just walk you through this function and get it going, and you can kind of listen while I talk through while it's downloading a bunch of stuff and installing it. So the function, like I said, is install.packages. By uh, the, the default argument it accepts is just the name of the package itself. Um, so in this case, it's ggplot2. You will often hear me say ggplot, but that's an error. I should say ggplot2. That's its actual name. Um, but if I run that, you'll notice that it is in quotation marks. So it's not like an object. That means it's literally the character's ggplot2, as opposed to some object that contains a characters that it should then install the, what those characters are. Um, so we'll kind of demonstrate that in a second, but this is the more common way of writing it. So I'm going to run that, and a bunch of stuff is going to start happening. It's a lot, right? Here's the thing. You don't need to understand all of this. You don't need to understand even most of it. Uh, but there are a few concepts that occur during this process that you probably should be aware of. First of all, there are dependencies. So our ggplot2 does not function by itself. It requires a lot of other packages. You can see them listed right here. It, of course, also uses a lot of the base packages in R, the R packages that are part of R. And it's not even limited to these. There are lots of add-ons and optional things that you can do with ggplot2. It's, it's, it's honestly like the, the foundation of a whole swath of the R development. So um, it's going through here. It's by default going to download from CRAN, uh, which is that archive, um, comprehensive R archive network. It's a compilation of well-reviewed um, packages that are, should be generally considered safe, or at least that's my experience and the, the general message that these are well-reviewed packages. Um, so it, it's a whole application process to get on the CRAN, um, and then there's like checks that it does to make sure they're all kind of compatible with each other. It is not perfect. Um, and so with a lot of things in programming, whenever you're installing new programs, you should be aware, like, we are not perfect. A lot of this is automatic systems, and so we are fallible, and so are they. Um, you know, this one is definitely a generally considered safe, um, so we're going to proceed. So it installed all of these dependencies. It then printed off a lot of information. It told me what it was um, managing to do. So this is it being um, uncompressed and then having the validity of the file checked so there's no corruption. It's not a different file than you were expecting. And finally, uh, there was no further messages. So it said that the packages are in this location and it exited. And that's actually the best outcome. So that means it worked well. So let's show what happens when it doesn't work well. And this is going to be a very common one. So the major 
problem, the most common problem is this right here. You run this code and it says ggplot not found. ggplot2, sorry. And hopefully you just noticed what I did was I removed the quotation marks. What that means is it's now looking for an object called ggplot2. Now I could actually say package I want. I could create a, um, an object called that contains ggplot2. And if I use that, it's now trying to install the contents of that object, which is called ggplot2. And it said, hey, I did it, because I just overwrote the file that already existed. It didn't have to do much. And so um, that is what's happening when you take off those quotation marks. But that is by far the most common error. And it's just, it can't find that object because, well, that object doesn't exist. What gets confusing is, what if that object did exist? And then you start getting some other different error. So let's make that one occur. Let's say you try to download ggplot3. I don't actually know if ggplot3 is a thing, so we'll, we're experimenting here. Okay, that's good. I was worried for a second. Uh, ggplot3 is not available for this version of R, which understandably kind of sounds like, well, maybe there's a different version of R I should be downloading. And occasionally that is true. Um, that if you had like a really old version or someone hasn't updated a package in a while, maybe there isn't a current version for you to download. Um, but most of the time, the vast majority of the time, the answer is you misspelled it. <laughs> it's the most common issue. And that's exactly what happened here is I, I just added three to it. And so something else, it, it couldn't find that package for this version of R. And so it gave me that message. So it's an extremely common error. Um, other things that will occur are a little bit, um, a little bit harder to understand. Um, could we scroll the script down a little bit? And uh, one of the c common ones that I find because I install some kind of weird packages at times is that I, I don't always want all of my data stored in the same place. And so if I try to install to a directory that I don't have permission to write in or it doesn't exist, I'm gonna get some weird errors. So for example, if for some reason my computer is set up to go through my C directory and then go to program files. So by default, Windows does not give programs permission to just write in and out of that program's directory. That's kind of a special space for storing important documents and you don't want someone, you know, getting access to your system. Let me expand this a little bit so you can read it. So if I run this, I'm going to get an error message. It's going to say, oh, got to fix my name. Gplot2. It's going to say permission denied. And there can be a couple different reasons to get this, but the most common one is that you don't have permission to install to that location. Now, if there's a reason why you need to install to a certain location, um, it uh, can be fixed by sometimes uh, rerunning RStudio as an administrator on your computer. I don't generally recommend that one, um, but what a common issue is, and it's a hard one to replicate, um, is that you have something that is accessing a file that needs to be replaced by install.packages, and that's why you don't have permission. And so sometimes rerunning it as an administrator can solve that issue. And it's, it's a tricky one to, to, to fix. Uh, there's a lot of kind of just help online that if you search for your particular error code, um, that you can find some different suggestions, but it, it's, it's always a, a problem. It's a bit of a problem solving opportunity. So another example I wanted to demonstrate is um, what happens if you are just trying to install something you do not have the ability to completely install, that it, it causes an error code. But unfortunately, I can't really get that one to appear very easily. And so I'm just going to show this right here. This is what you're looking for as kind of the bad outcome. 
There's a lot of reasons that bad outcome occurs, and there's going to be different error messages associated with it. But what you need to be looking for is if this occurs at the end of a very long string of pop-ups, you see this non-zero exit status, you know something went wrong. And that's when you really need to start doing troubleshooting and eventually you need to reach out to your instructors. So finally, um, I wanted to show actually loading the packages. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to show loading. Now what's interesting, the library function uh, does allow you to use quotation marks. However, unlike install packages, you can also not use quotation marks. And I think that's more just because they got tired of having to work with people who are new to this and were troubleshooting these, these quotation marks, or it could be a holdover from the original code. For whatever reason, install packages requires quotation marks. It doesn't try to interpret whatever you tell it as text. It tries to interpret it as it normal R does. Library does not. It interprets it in a weird way in terms of R syntax, where no matter what you give it, the first thing it checks is, well, is there any package with that name? And if so, it loads it. So in this case, either one of those works. Uh, what you don't want to see is this message. There is no package called ggplot three in this case. And that means that you didn't manage to install the package. Uh, there can be a lot of other stuff that pops up during this process. It can be very tricky to interpret, especially if it's going to try to compile any sort of information um, or build a new package. And so when that occurs, it can be tricky. Uh, but in the end, if you can load the library, it at least installed mostly. And that's where you should kind of cut it off. Like if it doesn't load, then keep trying until you figure out what was stopping it from installing and it can now load. The last thing I wanted to mention is that instead of library, you will sometimes see require. And the reason why people use require is um, instead of library, which just tries to load it and it produces an error, which will stop your package, uh, will stop a script from running, if you run require, it will actually return false if there is um, the, the, the package failed to load. And that allows you to kind of do new stuff in response to what happened during the package loading process. So for instance, I could say, all right, if, if this is not true, this is a complicated program, but that's essentially what this says. It says, if this is not true, then do stuff in here. And I could say print, oh no. And so when I ran this, it said, oh no, which isn't very useful, but you can imagine that in a good script, you would fill that with useful stuff. Things like, okay, well now go install that package. So that's the idea. Um, hopefully that helps. Again, if you had trouble, um, reach out to your instructors or your TAs. This is a very common source of issue. Don't let this stop you from interacting with these packages because they are really cool, valuable resources. Thank you.